Ah, all right. Uh, this should be good right now. All right, I'm s all right. I'm sitting. I'm sitting up. My chair scooted all the way in. Ah, my back should feel should feel should be thanking me right now. Not just be thanking myself. <laughs> all right, let's go on. Let's go and start this, shall we? Ah, chapter fifty. Ah. Chapter fifteen. Odal to joy. Story. March to the scaffold by Foxy Kimchi. Foxy dear, Robert called out behind the counter. Yes, Mrs. Red. Silver answered, turning her head back, her mane and coat slightly disheveled from the long day of work. Her apron was covered in food stains, and she was sure she smelled of burnt bread. I know it's. <clears throat> I know it is closing. Is I know it is close to closing up shop. But there are two more ponies sitting outside, waiting to be served. Can you be a dear and see what they would like? Rye asked as she carried a crate of dishes. Silver turned her head and looked out. I looked up at the clock, which read 4:55 p.m. Five more minutes until closing time. Really? Okay, I guess you're not a night place. She looked back at Rye Bread. Of course I will, Mrs. Bread. She replied with a pleasant smile. She got up and grabbed her notepad in her teeth and made her way out the door. As soon as she turned her head, her smile turned to a scowl and her ears flickered in annoyance. Oh, you have got to be kidding me, Silver thought. Five minutes until I'm off and two more freaking customers come? I want to leave and go to Maltar, but no, two more annoying ponies need something now. Grumbling under her breath, she lifted her head, wearing a large pleasant smile. Lifting a hoop, she opened the door and walked outside. Squinting her eyes against the sunlight, she scanned outside, trying to find the two customers. Her eyes locked into two figures sitting in the corner. Her jaw dropped, and the notepad fell to the ground. Seated in a corner were two mares. One was white, was a white pegasus with a pink mane and magenta eyes. The other one was a light blue unicorn with dark blue mane and glasses. And uh, and teal eyes. The glaring thing about the two was how tall, delicate, and elegant they looked compared to the average pony. Both turned their heads towards Silver, each one giving a welcome smile. Ah, I think I know who these are. Silver's eyes and ears twitched ever so slightly. She turned her head around, her eyes scanning the area to verify that no pony round. After a moment, she quickly trotted towards the table. Upon reaching it, she placed her forehoof on top of it, bringing her face close to the two mares, glaring at them. What are you two doing here? Silver said in annoyance. Tone. Uh, an annoying tone. Oh, never mind. I'm not, oh, never mind. Uh, two mares. I forgot. I forgot. Wait. Wait, what? Are they who they think are? Uh, never mind. I'll just read on. What are you two doing here? Silver said in an annoyed tone, flowing slightly. <clears throat> The slightly taller white pegasus turned her head to the pony beside her. Sister, she saw right through our own disguises. I told you this was not enough. She sighed loudly. What? The blue, the blue unicorn exclaimed as she jumped in her seat, the glasses lowering slightly on her muzzle. These disguises are perfect. We made them ourselves. You are the ones that suggested we make them. Yes, I did, but I also said that these forms are too small and slender. We stand out from other ponies, the white mare said, as she rubbed her template with her hoof. Nonsense, the unicorn huffed, puffing at her chest. There's no need for us to hide our natural beauty. You said yourself that others try to mimic our image. I take pride in the way I look. But the point I'm trying to make is that Silver saw right through it. We stick out like a sore hoof. I told you we should have toned it down a bit. Our magic is not flawed, sister. We I have done more than enough, and then some. And I'm even wearing these glasses for aided effect. The unicorn countered as she levitated her glasses off, her muzzle. <laughs> Besides, I wanted to do more, but you stopped me. You wanted to wear a mustache, the pegasus replied as she slapped her on the face with a hoof. So? You told me that you told me that I should become a claim to modern culture, and I did. Every time I watch a movie, the characters always have mustaches for disguise. It's always worked in the movie. 
Unicorn exclaimed as she lowered her glass back on her muzzle. The white unicorn sighed loudly. Sister, I told you that their doing was a joke. It was done for comedic effect. It did not really work. It worked in the movie, the unicorn replied back as she stomped her hoof on the ground. Just because something happens in a movie does not mean it is real. There is a difference between reality and what is portrayed in movies, the Pegasus answered, again rubbing her template with a hoof and closing her eyes. <clears throat> then why do they put it in the movie if it does not work? The unicorn huffed back as she stomped her hoof again. Silver watched, dumbfounded, her jaw hanging and her eyes wide as she watched the two mares bicker in front of her. Quickly shaking her head out of a daze, she cleared her throat loudly. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt your fascinating discussion, but can you explain why in Equestria you two are where I am at work? Silver said in an annoyed tone while raising an eyebrow. Both mares turned to look at her, blushing slightly. Sorry about that. We need to get a little. Dis we tend to get a little distracted when we go in it. When we go at it a, a little bit, the Pegasus replied. Silver scrunched her eyebrow slightly. I can see that. How did you see through our disguises so easily? The blue unicorn asked, as the straight as she straightened her glasses. Silver gave a loud sigh. Your eyes were a dead giveaway. I remember those eyes, and you stick out a lot. Your form is very distinctive. I told you, sister. Celestia said. Hmm. <laughs> Huff, Luna. Silver rubbed her template for a second, and then she turned around and started to walk towards the bakery again. I'll be right back. I'm getting some coffee. Oh no, please! We know it is late. We do not want to give you extra work, Celestia called with a gentle smile. Silver stopped, turning her head. It is not for you I'm going to need a cup. It is not for you I am going to need a cup. Celestia, Luna, and Silver skip sat around a small circular table, each with her own cup of coffee. Silver looked down at her cup and eyed the pitch black coffee inside. Peeking up, she gave it a slight sniff before she took a large sip. She felt the warm and bitter liquid stream down her throat. Placing the cup down, she gave out a large sigh. So, what brings the Princess of Equestria to this little establishment here? Silver asked as she looked at the two mares in front of her. Celestia's horn glowed slightly as she poured a small amount of cream and sugar into her cup. Once done, she picked up and stirred and began to mix her drink. We heard Multibrake woke up. My, my sister and I were thrilled when we heard the news. We wanted to see how you were doing and make sure everything is all right. Silver looked down slightly, a small smile forming on her face. You know, ev everything is good. Maldar is excited to make a full recovery soon, and after some physical therapy. "'Tis wondrous news indeed," Luna replied, as she picked up a sugar packet with her magic. She poured the contents into her cup and discarded the used packet to a small mountain of, of empty sugar packets. "'Silver is a name you want to be addressed by, correct?' "'Yes, it is. I see. Before we start, I must ask you a question,' Luna said." as he looked at Silver. Do you still resent my sister and I for our actions against you? Celestia's eyes widened as her wings lightly unfurled. Sister! Is that an appropriate question? Luna turned her head towards Celestia in a serious look on her face. Sister, both you and I are wondering the same thing right now. Besides, it is better to get the truth out in the open now. If she still resents us, then it will be awkward for her if we stay here. Luna turned her head back towards Silver, her face impassive. Silver, it would be best if you were to be honest with us. There will be no repercussions if you express your feelings. If you still resent us, my sister and I will leave you alone for now. Silver sat there at the stand as she stared into her cup, watching the strays ripples in its, the slight ripples in its, after a while, she let out a loud sigh and looked up to the two princesses. You know, she said in a soft tone, after the trial, all I could think about was revenge on both of you. I was so furious at, two, at the two of you for what you have done. But funny things happen. 
along the way, and I'm pretty sure Celestia planned on it. After I met Maltar, I slowly became adjusted to this new environment. Slowly but surely, I started to enjoy life. However, I could not admit it to myself. That's when Maltar got injured. I was so confused and hurt, I did not know what to do. That's when she came. If it were not for Celestia destroying her, I would have lost everything that I cared about. She may have tried to steal everything from me, but she made me realize that life is good. When I took, when I look back on it all, I'm surprised at how much she has changed. But what surprised me the most is how I care about what happened. About my past life. I am enjoying my life now. So to answer your, so to answer your question, no. I do not resent you too. Celestia and Luna smiled gently in response. Silver lifted her cup and took a sip of her coffee. Exhaling, she put it back down and smiled back. Silver smiled back. It's shocking how, e how much easier life is when I'm not holding a grudge. It is as if... As if... She trailed off. Luna spoke up. As if... Though your intense desire for vengeance, you had waged up a great war in which you had to don a suit of armor. Wait. I'm sorry. What? Uh, never mind. As if you fought your desire for vengeance, you had waged a great war within you that had donned a suit of armor so that you would not be injured. At first, when the flames of war buried passionately inside you, you were thankful for it. You were untouched, a goddess striking down mortals. However, when the years dragged on, there seemed to be no end to the long, excruciating conflict which only escalated as your desire to vanquish your foe became more and more desire desperate. The armor, be the armor became increasingly heavier, and it began to cut into your skin. I've gone for liters of water. I think I, it's actually good for me. Believe me, all that juice, been, all that gulls, gallons of juice, been consuming lately. Ugh. That which you once protected from your own uh, from your own opponents now hindered you, which only ma which only made you want more to defeat your nemesis for making you suffer the agony of a war. Before long, you realized that trying to hear the armor, trying to bear the armor, was even worse than bearing the war's horrors. Exhausted and demoralized beyond possibility of a rest of recovery, you could nearly fall frail in battle and you realized that you were hurting yourself more with each passing engagement, the increasing weight of the armor threatening to crush you. And then, finally, you began to ask yourself, even if I win this war, what will I gain? I may destroy my enemy, but I will fail in the act. Yet, in the silent darkness of your despair, you realized that there is, was a perfect solution that had been staring you in the face all along. The enemy against you, whom you were, you were so desperately fighting, did not wear that suit of armor. Rather, she had surrounded herself with aliens who defended her, and she turned to defend them. But, most evidently, they did not harm her like your armor harmed you. At the last, at the moment, this empathy struck you. You asked yourself, if I took off this armor and approached her with a white flag, would she strike me? This in itself is unnecessary, however, because you knew that it would be better to fall than to suffer another wound in this now ancient conflict. As soon as you undid the clasp of your breastplate and unlatched the straps of your shoes and they fell onto the ground with an earth-shaking thud, you felt the sheer relief. Having left behind your armor, you approach their camp with a white flag without any fear because you no longer have anything to lose. Yet, contrary to your expectations, before you even passed over the lines of battle, your <sighs> anarchy. Wait. <clears throat> 
your arch enemy came galloping out to meet you, her neck arched upwards, offering a friendly nuzzle. Then, when you accepted her welcome embrace, she eagerly led you to her kingdom, where you prosperly now last for the rest of your life. And any time any problem or any other enemy threatens you, you would not fear because you had an ally that will not betray you. Yeah, Silver said, wide-eyed. How did you know? Luna chuckled lightly. You and I are more alike than you think. We both have past actions that we wish to forget. Silver looked down, smiling. So, Silver, can I say we are friends from now on? Luna asked as she raised her hoof and held over the table. She looked over to Celestia, smiling. Celestia grinned back and mimicked the sister's actions, holding a hoof next to her sister. Friends? Silver reached at the two hooves in front of her. In an instant, she began to recall everything that had happened recently. Her failed invasion, her punishment, and finally, Moltar. A smile began to form on her face. Lifting her hoof, she shook the two hooves in front of her. Yes, friends indeed. How wonderful! Lumi exclaimed loudly. Quickly, she moved across the table and picked up Silver, embracing her in a large hug. Silver's wide-eyed. Silver's eyes widened, a blush forming across her face from a sudden contact. Oh, sorry about that, Luna said bashfully, gently placing Silver back down and moving back to her seat. I tend to get a little excited when I make friends. I can see, Silver replied, as she fixed her mane. Celestia only smiled as she gently lifted her cup and took a sip, her sister following suit after Luna put another sugar packet in her beverage. So... Celestia said, after she placed her cup down. How are you doing? I am doing well. When I saw Moltar moving, I was so happy. I did not know if it was real or not. Now he's awake, I just can't imagine my life without him. I'm sorry, I lost my... Alright. <laughs> now he's awake, I just can't imagine a life without him. She struggled to get the words out as tears formed in her eyes. She wiped Oops. her eyes with a hoof. I, I do hate you for this. Ever since you saved me, I can't stop doing this. Once I start crying, I just c can't control myself. Silver continued as more tears flowed down her face. She sniffed loudly in an attempt to hide the tears. The more she tried to hide them, the more they continued to flow. She gasped slightly as she felt something brush against her back. She looked up and saw Celestia standing above her, wrapping a wing around her. There, there, it's all right. There's no shame in expressing your feelings. Really, it feels quite nice to let it all out, to get it out of your stream. Celestia re uh, replied as she pulled Silver closer with a wing. There is no weakness in expressing yourself. Silver looked up, drying her eyes with a hoof. You are right, Celestia. I hate to admit it, but you are right. Your way, your way is better. I can't imagine a life without Maltar. Celestia and Luna, in return, only offered a warm and gentle smile. Is this how you defeat your enemies? Silver continued. With... With doe eyes and hugs? Luna chuckled. At first, I disagreed with my sister, but I can see why she does that the way she does. It does work. Tis much better and less messy anyways. Why worry about enemies when you can have friends instead? Silver grinned slightly, calming herself down. Minutes passed as a gentle breeze filled the air. Finally, Celestia and Luna stood up. Well, Silver... We seem to have taken too much of your time. We know you want to go and visit Maltar, so my sister and I will take our leave. If you need anything to do, if you, if you want anything, do not hesitate to ask. We will be more than happy to help. Silver watched as they stood up, and they turn, as they turned around, Silver found herself shaking slightly. Gulping, she quickly stood up.
Wait! Silva cried out as she raised the hoof. The two sisters stopped and turned their heads, their eyes wandering slightly in surprise at the sudden outburst. There is something I want you two to do, actually, Silva said, staring at the ground. Both sisters glanced at each other, surprised. Turning around, they gently sat down next to Silver. Yes? What is it? Luna asked. Silver continued to look down to her hooves, giving a loud sigh. She looked back up at the two sisters. Ever since Moltar woke up, something has been gnawing at me. I want to move on with my I want to move on in my life, Silver said quietly. What is wrong, dear? Celestia asked. I want to tell Maltar who I really am. I know if I don't I will just continue it will just continue to eat at me. He deserves to know too, after all I put him through. I understand your desire, Luna commented, but I'm confused on what it has to do with us. Your subjects practically worship you two. I'm afraid that if I tell him myself he will he will not believe me. But if you two are there, then he will begin to listen to you two, Silver replied, shivering slightly. Celestia smiled again, wrapping a wing around Silver. If that is what you wish, then my sister and I will be there. Maltar looked at a half-eaten hoof at, his, at the half-eaten food before him, idly poking it with a fork. He let out a loud sigh. I'm so bored! Where's Silver? It doesn't like her to be late. I wonder what's keeping her. Letting out another sigh, he dropped his fork and stretched his forelegs slightly. Although his body was still sore, he was getting better every day. He grunted as he moved his hind leg slightly. His doctor had said that the physical therapy would start very soon. At least I can feel them. The door clicked. Moldar jumped. A little as he turned his head to see Silver walk, walk in. Silver! Moldar cried out. Grunting, he tried to sit up, using his forehooves. No, Moldar, stop it! Silver called out as she rushed to his side. She gently helped him back down. Please, just take it easy. It's all right. If you say so, Moldar replied as he lay back down, panting a little bit. So, Moldar continued continued as he turned his head towards Silver. What's up? It's not like you to be late. Silver turned her head away slightly, scrunching up her face slightly. Hey, what's wrong? Moltar asked as he reached out with a hoof. Letting out a loud sigh, Silver turned her head and faced Moltar, her emerald eyes staring, staring directly into his brown eyes. Moltar, Silver said as she gently held his, held his head in her forehooves. I love you. I truly do. I love you with all my heart and soul. Moltar's eyes widened, a rush going on his face. S Silver, I love you too, Moltar said softly. However, he was interrupted as Silver put a hoof gently over his mouth. Moltar, I truly want to be with you the rest of my life. You were the first thing I'd grown close to, I grew close to. Moltar, I need to tell you something, and I'm very afraid right now, Silver continued tears slowly forming in the corner of her eyes. Silver, what's wrong? What's going on? Moltar asked nervously. Silver turned her head, looking at the door. You two can come in now, she called out. The door suddenly opened as the two mares walked in. Once was a dark... One was a dark blue unicorn and the other a white pegasus. Both were tall and elegant. The unicorn's horn glowed as the door gently closed. Silver, who are these two ponies? Moltar asked, his eyes darting back and forth between the two mares. Go ahead, Silver continued. Show him. Both mares nodded again, and again and again the blue unicorn's horn glowed. Her arse surrounded both herself and the mare next to her. Suddenly, there was a flash of light, and Moltar squinted. After the light faded, he gasped as Princess Celestia and Luna stood before him. Neither of them wore any of the regalia. And yet, they were still as elegant as ever. Hello, my little pony, Celestia said in a soft voice. Your Majesties, Moltar shouted as he struggled to get up. At ease, Moltar Brick, Luna called out as she raised the hoof. There is no need for such formalities, as you are injured, so please rest. S Silver, what are they doing here? Moltar whispered into Silver's ear. No, it wasn't a whisper, but whatever. <laughs> 
Moltar, they are here because of me, Silver replied, looking into his eyes. Moltar's eyes widened. Wait, he cried out. This has to do with Silver hitting Prince Bluebud, isn't it? L look, it was not her fault. She, she was being disrespectful and... Easy, easy, Celestia said as she raised a hoof. Silver is not in any sort of trouble. Actually, she wants to tell you something. Silver, what's going on? Malter asked, confused, his eyes darted from Silver to the princesses. M Maltar, Silver said in a soft voice, I brought them here because, if you do not believe me, then at least you can believe them. Maltar, I truly care for you, and I swear I never meant to hurt you. Silver, Maltar, Silver interrupted, there is no easy way to say this, so I'm going to be blunt. Maltar, I'm Chrysalis, former queen of the Changelings. I've always been Chrysalis when you first met Silverskip. That was me. Moltar's eyes widened. His breathing became erratic, and his heart began to pound faster. W what? Moltar, please don't hate me. I really do love you, Silver cried out, tears flowing from her eyes. I want to be with you. I don't care about power or anything else. I care about you. I want to be with you. Uh, how? Moltar gasped, as he looked straight into Silver's teary emerald eyes. How is it all possible? I think my sister can explain all of this, Celestia answered softly as she stood next to Silver. Luna followed suit, standing on the opposite side. I assure you, my little pony, there's nothing to worry about, Celestia said with a calm and gentle face. Motar leaned up slightly on his bed, his eyes wide. Whoa! Just... Whoa! So! You are really Chrysalis? Silver looked away, turning her back towards Moltar. I was, but not anymore. I'm done with that. And you made her a pony? Moltar asked as he looked at Princess Celestia and Luna. Yes and no, my little pony, Celestia replied as she stood next to Moltar. It is complicated somewhat, but the first changing was a pony who used dark magic to gain power. She passed on the dark magic to her descendants. All my sister and I did was remove the magic, restoring her back to her original form. That's a lot to take in, Moltar said quickly. And there's no bad blood between you? No, Moltar, Silver replied, turning her head slightly to look at him. There is none. I do not want to fight anymore. I just want a life with you. If it makes you feel better, we consider each other friends. Indeed we do, Luna replied, as she stood next to her sister. Moltar, it is not our place to tell you what to do, but ponies can change. I too have made grave mistakes in the past, but that does not mean I cannot, I cannot move forward. My sister and I have forgiven each other and moved on. You do trust me as one of your princesses, even though back in my younger days I tried to bring sensible night, eternal nights. I, I do, your highness, Moltar answered as he looked at Luna. I was scared at first, but as time went on, I trust you just like the rest of Equestria does. Luna smiled at his comments. Redemption is possible, my loyal subject. Moltar turned his head back to Silver. So you really had, to, so you really had to choose between power and me. Silver let, out, Silver let out a loud sniff. She instantly turned towards Moltar. Her eyes filled with tears. Moltar, I'm so sorry," she said between sobs. She moved closer to the bed, choking up. I never wanted to hurt you, let alone do such horrible things. Moltar, I swear to you that I never wanted to kill you, nor even for all the power in the world. I wanted to be with you. You made me happy. I'm sorry I didn't realize it sooner. I was confused when we first met. I thought I was I thought it was weakness to have a, rela a relationship to open it oneself to another being. But I was so wrong. Silva continued to cry, more tears flowing down her face. <gasps> Maltar, I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? Maltar stared at her, 
his eyes widening. This is the Queen of the Changelings. This is the Queen of Changelings? The enemy of Canterlot? I mean, the princess told me she is Silverskip, but this would really be Chrysalis? Would this really be Silverskip? Silver rarely even showed her emotions, except anger. He continued to look at Silver, who was beginning to hyperventilate. Does it matter that does it matter if she's Chrysalis? The time I spent with her was real. I mean something I mean something does change does it change anything, knowing who she really is? I mean she is still a pony after all. She still makes me happy. But why am I not freaking out? I knew she was different from normal ponies. She looks slightly different, but what is but that is because she's skinnier at most. But I felt something was different. Was it that was it that why I started to become I, uh, was it why was that why I started to become attracted to her? Because she was different? All the painkillers are all are the painkillers the reason why I'm not panicking? Well, I'm glad that I'm handling it okay. Still, she's really upset at this. Is she is she that scared of losing me? I never thought somebody would care so much about me. Does it not matter who she is? It does not matter who she is. I love her, and she loves me. What is life without risk? Silver, Maltar said softly. Silver continued to cry, breathing hard between sobs, and her body was shaking. I'm sorry, she said over and over again. Silver, he repeated more loudly. Silver continued to cry unaware. Maltar sighed loudly. Whoa, she's hysterical. I better do something. Adjusting his position on the bed, Malta leaned over and gently grabbed Silver's head in his hooves. She looked at him. She looked at him. Her emerald eyes red, red from crying. Quickly, he stuck out his tongue and licked her face. Okay. Silver's eyes widened as her crying stopped. She stared at Maltar, unable to react. It's all right, Silver, Maltar said, as he stroked her mane. I forgive you. Even knowing your past, I still love and trust you. So please, stop crying. Really? Silver asked as she calmed down. You still love me? Even after what I've done? Yes, he replied, embracing her in a deep hug. It's all right. I love you. I love you with all my heart and soul. So calm down. I don't like seeing you all worked up like this. It's not like you. Not at all like my silver. Silver let a sniff, hugging back. Thank you, Maltar. Thank you. Luna wiped an eye with her wingtip. Isn't it just so romantic, sister? True love knows no bounds. Celestia smiled, looking down at her sister. Indeed it is. Silver closed her eyes and smiled, enjoying Moltar's comfort and warmth. It was as if a huge burden had been lifted from her back. No longer did she have to worry about her past. Suddenly, her eyes shut open. Quickly, she pushed Moltar back, slightly, and stared at him. Did you just lick me? She asked, in an annoyed tone. Moltar gasped slightly from a sudden movement, looking at Silver. Well... Yes, I did. I thought it would get your attention. You were panicking, so I thought it would help relax attention. Silver's eyes widened. Her bruise... <laughs> she brushed her face with her forehooves. That is disgusting, Maltar! Use your tongue! She shrieked. Maltar grinned. Well, well, well. Were you not complaining about my tongue the first time we quissed? He replied in a sly tone as he wiggled his eyebrows. Silver's jaw dropped. A blush growing on her face, her eyes darted towards Celestia and Luna, each one whom covered their mouth with a hoof to hide a giggle. How, how could you say that in front of them? She yelled at him, her face reddening even more. Well, if that's a problem, we can show them instead, he replied with a smirk. Silver blushed only, Silver's blush only grew, her eyes darting back and forth between the princesses and Moltar. Whoa. She's cute when she's fluff when she's frustrated, Moldar thought. I should remember this. 
Silver quickly moved her head forward and bit Molar's nose. Ow! He yelled as he grabbed his nose. I'm injured, you know. And I'll injure you even more. How dare you embarrass me like that? She yelled back. Come on, I'll just mess with you. He replied meekly. You will not mess with me. Silver huffed as she stomped her hoof. Celestia leaned forward, leaned towards Luna. I think it's, I think it's time we leave them, she whispered to her sister's ear. I know, Luna whispered back, but I can't move my eyes away. This is just so entertaining and cute to watch them. Is that what they call a lover's quarrel? Indeed it is, sister, Celestia replied, not taking her eyes off of Moltar and Silver. After a moment, she cleared her throat. Well, she said. Moltar and Silver stopped and stared at Celestia. My sister and I are happy for you, the princess continued. However, I think it is time for us to take our leave. We wish you speedy recovery, Moltar. And best of luck to both of you, Luna added. At, and at the time, at the time, both Celestia and Luna's horn glowed. Oh, I almost forgot, I almost forgot, Luna said. Do tell us if you are expecting foals. My sister and I love foals. Ta-ta, young lovers. May your love blossom forth. With a flash of light, Celestia and Luna vanished. Moltar and Silver stared at the spot where the two princesses just stood. And then they stared at each other, both of them starting to blush profusely. Oh, profoundly. <laughs> well, this is, this is, this, honestly, this isn't the story I expected. Um, let's see, there's one more chapter. Oh, actually, no. Yes, there is a one more chapter. Next chapter! Ha <laughs> ha!